What's up guys, my name is Lex Feldes and welcome to another episode of Learn with Lex. Today we're going to be looking at the $4 Bounty Builder. I hope we're going to see some interesting bounty spots. And of course in the top left you will see how long the tournament's been running. I'm going to talk about every single relevant hand and we start off immediately with a nice one. We have pocket nines, it's 50 big blinds, we're going to raise. Of course anytime we do raise or want to play a hand in a Bounty Builder we make a customary scan of the table. This is a good idea even if you wouldn't normally raise a hand from this position. There could be somebody with 0.7 big blinds and normally you'd full jack for suited here, but this might be a good time to call or do something else. So we're going to start off. We have a caller here. Uh, the first thing that goes through my mind is when people are this deep and there's no immediate short stacks at the table, uh, I don't think that they ever have a big pair. Okay, so the first thing I think when I see a 40 big blind shove is I'm discounting uh, aces, kings, and queens from their range. There could be some tens or jacks in there, but that's only 12 combinations, right? Those two pairs. And then there are 16 combinations of ace-king. There's a bounty involved, so I will be calling here with nines. I do expect to see a lot of king-queen suited even for 40 big blinds. And there we go. We have a slight advantage. And we do get it done. It's very important when you see a big all-in to try and uh, gauge how many strong hands are going to be in there, right? Like how many of their big pairs. And if we can already slice off the aces, the kings, the queens, and possibly even the jacks, then we're already doing a lot uh, better in that exchange. So really good start. Literally the first hand I play, as you can see in the runtime, we're only playing for a few minutes. All right, we have ace jack here. We're going to raise. We see a limper. So we're just going to raise with our strong hands, see what happens after. All right, so after isolating, we're going to bet small. We don't have to bet uh, very big. They're going to have a lot of like jack 10, 10, 9 that are going to instantly fold. So we get that done. All right, we're going to call along here. Queen jack in the big blinds. No other move than call. Generally a really good board for us. We're going to have a lot of 9x. Also, what we need to realize, though, is that this player, I mean, good players, will take it a little bit easy knowing that there's quite a bit of 9x over here and a lot more 9x over here. So also no need to start betting huge for this reason as well. It's not like we have a massive advantage or something. Uh, Wesley insta calls, doesn't do anything else, doesn't even consider raising, just calls. So I'm going to give him a lot of weaker jacks, maybe a six, maybe pocket sevens or something. Obviously lots of the straight draws miss, uh, which means that we can, uh, you know, they're going to be a little bit more suspect of a bluff. Time to get some value. I do think that King Jack would have considered raising, would have considered bet betting the flop. So let's just bet big and take it down. And they had a six, king six off, a little on the light side. But um, there you go, we got paid and we won a massive pot. Okay, so we're gonna be calling here. It's three and a half big blinds, true, but we cover bounty, bounty, and we know that Wesley loves to gamble. So there's a lot of uh, situations where we might win a lot of money here uh, with Wesley gambling against us earlier all right so we flop an open ender of course like the worst situation would be if they go all in but i don't think a whole lot of people uh, slow play aces for 43 big blinds right this is way more of a danger when i have 10 to 15 big blinds so we have an open ender so we're just going to see what happens oh yeah wesley had, was the the king six guy uh no reason to raise don't start going crazy with your open enders um absolutely we got perfect odds to call Let's hope under the gun doesn't do anything crazy. All right, that sucks. Let's hope that they hate it as well. Little check through the river four. Is that too much to ask? I think we can call again. We got insane odds. Open enders are a lot more powerful than you think. Also, because if we hit it, we get the $1 bounty. Uh, here you see, I only have to call 15 for 62. And then when I hit, I'm almost positive that I'll get paid his 30 and the bounty, which is worth a lot at this stage. So, yikes. Now we're just going to give up. It doesn't really make sense to jam. Just at least save me from the embarrassment and just go all in, you know. Do it. All right. Okay, so we got a free, well, not entirely free. It's half a big blind, you know, but it's uh, sort of free. Okay, so they have most of the pairs because they limped a little bit. They have most of the aces. They have most of the deuces, right? Immediately, I'm not looking at my hand. It's not like I look at the board and think, is there a six? Is there a nine? Uh, no. Okay, I stopped thinking about this. What's my next step, right? 
okay, but what is the board? Uh, can they make a claim? Uh, can they make a claim to this board or can they make a claim to this board? If that answer would have been no, then it might be a good time to bluff. But in this case, the answer is yes, 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 yes on all counts. So we're just going to check it. Huge, uh, huge opportunity missed there. You see that uh, this is exact. This is the exact thing I was talking about. Uh, Matze here stopped thinking about this pot the moment he missed his hand. But if he thought about it, I didn't raise, they didn't raise. So there's not going to be a whole lot of aces. This person actually has 100% of their fucking hands. So that's 9-5 off is in there, right? 6-3 uh, offsuit. So they have a gazillion hands that miss. I didn't raise, I'm in a small blind. I'm going to have lots of random hands as well. They are the ones that show the most strength, right? They can have suited aces. They can be slow playing some ace, king, ace, queen, whatever. So this would have been the easiest bet in the turn in the world to take this pot down so this 750 the reason they lost is not because they missed it's because they just let it go they just gave up it's just it, the money out it's actually it's almost bothering me <laughs> money out there that could have been won but you know it's 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 i i can't i can't express this enough and i, I think that's what we talk about a lot right you hear a lot oh there's low stakes people shouldn't be bluffing or don't bluff don't bluff too much and uh uh, uh, uh value bet your hands really hard and while i agree with that i think it's also really important to see what pots we can steal right can't just roll over it's jack high all right so now we know by now we know that wesley uh likes to play a lot of hands so we're gonna isolate all right this is a pretty tough situation don't know much about davo don't cover this bounty generally king queen for 30 big blinds isn't that great so I'm just going to fold this one. Um, I saw in the comments that you guys asked me to make notes and how to do it. So I'm going to show you guys an example note on what to write. Uh, so about Wesley, what have we seen so far, right? Uh, plays very wide post flop, takes, takes a passive approach with most hands. Um, and then what we also saw is that he called with a king six on a relatively dry board when we value bet the queen jack, right? So we might want to add something like big value bets seem to work on non-dangerous boards so what did i do here so what I, what i did here is i made a very general note if i would have said if i would have said call, listen to this right like this is how some people write notes calls race uh, with king 60 on the button checks jack 99 turn six calls bet river four bet 80 percent pot calls like Guys, are you telling me you're playing a fucking session, you're reading that note and you think, ah, okay, cool. So what we want to do is we want to make notes that are valuable in other situations when they come up. So what we know now, plays very wide post flop, takes passive approach with most weaker hands. Weaker hands. You could even put example. If you play a lot with somebody, you can even put examples, right? 4x or something. You can do that, like, see, seen it four times. Stuff like that works as well. <clears throat> big value bets seem to work on non-dangerous boards. We made a big value bet. They called King Six Offsuit. So this hand told me two things, right? Place weak hands passively pre-flop. This is a very non-threatening board. I bet rather large, right? Here we go. 1190 into 1600. And uh, they called it with King Six. And I'm in the big blind. And I have every jack in the book. I have most of the nine. So... It's like, I'm not saying it's a bad call, guys. I think that that is actually pretty good for calling. But I do sense that with Wesley, it, there's a big chance that, he, that he'll uh, pay off on uh, big bets. Because it, <laughs> you have to look at it this way. If you have trouble folding the King-6 offsuit pre-flop, you're going to be mighty curious to see what somebody else had, right? So that in combination with the fact that I did bet big makes that a really good note. So that's just a, a little lesson for you guys. All right, so it's really important when we get to this stage in Bounty Builders, right? Like you guys have asked in the comments also, like what about short stacking in Bounty Builders? When you become short stack, you definitely want to play a little bit tighter as you, as you, uh, tighter than you would in a normal tournament. Don't raise the bottom of your range, right? If, if, if normally you'd raise six, seven suited when you're 20 big blinds deep from some situation spots, it's probably a good idea to not do it when you have a bounty on you. But this is very tempting. I'm just gonna raise. I think Wesley is so wide. I mean, King six off, like any of that. I like normally. I told you guys earlier, like shave off the bottom of your range, but I think that's 
their range is so wide that I can actually go a lot wider, which means this is not, you know, going to be one of the worst hands I would have. Let's hope I don't get all in on. Wow. Snap calls. Man, I'll tell you, Wesley, lo Wesley loves to see three cards. He's just, he's in there. <laughs> he's, he's in there. 5-4. Amazing. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Wesley gets there. It's a gut shot on the river. Backdoor flush draw. All right, we're gonna we're gonna raise twenty big blinds. Very glad to get it in. Uh, we don't cover anybody, which means everybody covers us. Which means people are gonna be playing hands against us. That's a pretty good board. Some hearts, some Broadway combinations do pretty well. So two players could check this board sometime, but I'm gonna bet. Remember, every time we say when we play pots multi way, there's no really need no real need to bet that big. We get raised, we're just gonna get it in. Once uh, our opponents fast play a hand, uh, we're just gonna fast play hands as well. You know, let's say they have a hand like ace nine or ace jack, then uh, the 10 of hearts on the turn could definitely hinder us a little bit. Uh, we're just gonna go all in here. There you go, ace seven, dust. <gasps> Close. And there we go, 50 big blinds again. Boom, easy. All right, I'm going to call, hoping that the big blind goes all in, because Wesley can't resist an all in for a bounty. And when they do, we get to jam over the top. So just trying to think logically of what we've seen so far of Wesley. And then we get to go all in, and we're going to be all in against the hand like 10-9, because he's also going to call us, and it's going to be great. There you go, Queen Jack. Need some help. Oof. That's too bad, but I feel pretty good about how we uh, describe that situation. All right, so we uh, we saw that hand and we predicted perfectly what was going to happen. I think it's uh, worth it to go over it. So I think that uh, this hand is just purely a game mechanic type, right? So what what did we what did we? Oh yeah, another note, right? Loves to see flops for bounties. Doesn't isolate them. That means that he just calls. He just wants to see the flop, right? We've seen this time and time again. Ten big blinds all in, call. Uh, so this is this is one of my. Uh, estimations for uh, for this hand so i told you guys right before what's gonna happen right they're gonna call we're gonna limp they're gonna think oh this is actually a good spot to get all in versus one of the two i call they go all in this will give him this will give them a safe feeling uh, if i raise beforehand uh, then they might be a little bit wary right because let's say i make it three big blinds big blind goes all in now they might think well they're just gonna go all in and i don't want to play for 40 bigs but we don't give them that feeling sense of security we jam and uh I said they're gonna have hands like Jack 10, they have Queen Jack. Easy. Even here, it's still with massive equity, but it all doesn't matter, right? Like, we're all in with Ace 5 versus Queen Jack, uh, and Ace 5 versus Ace 3 for a bounty, even though we completely disregard this because the side pot's actually what we're, uh, what we're worried about here. Um, so, we get it in 60 big blinds uh, as a favorite. And of course, in this instance, it shows that he has 39.5%, but um, generally, generally, this person doesn't necessarily share outs with us. Um, uh, plus the fact that they can sometimes fold, right? If they fold here, let's say they don't have, let's let's say they have like seven five off, right? There there are hands that they're gonna fold, right? So let's say they're gonna fold here. We get a free sixteen hundred. We're up against somebody with a double bounty, uh, easy pickings really. So um, obviously when you see this, when I say like, and we're gonna be a favorite three way, uh, what I mean is like generally we're gonna be massive favorites here. Plus, that's when we even get calls, and obviously they're also gonna have um, they're gonna have folds. So then we pick up the 1600, and that's incredible. This is one of those situations where it's important to scan the tables. Uh, there's somebody all in, but we're way too early in the process. This won't go unnoticed, so I'm gonna fold. But very important to be aware of this before you play your hand. So we got move table, which is unfortunate. I feel like we had a pretty good read on the first table. Now is that we're going towards the bubble. We're very far away. First thing you do when you get to a new table in a bounty builder, scan the table. Is there any absurd short stacks? Who do you cover? Like you need to know all these things, right? You don't want to go to a new table, think, oh, I think this is about to fold and then fold and you see three one big blind stacks, right? I mean, it's an exaggeration, but it happens all the time. So we're short, somebody makes it three big blinds. I'm going to call, see what happens. If this was three big blinds from this position, I probably wouldn't call, but they cover most of the people behind them. They have a big stack. Now we have a decision to make. Let's hope they don't go for some ridiculous bets. It's quite large still, but we're just gonna call. At this stage, they should be very afraid of me having a pair. 
Therefore, if they do bet the turn, I'm just going to get out of the way. Folding the flop would be ridiculous because they're still going to have under pairs, other ace highs that we beat, uh, straight draws that we do well against. And, wow, this seems extremely greedy. We're just going to fold here, though. The eight on top of everything, the eight is just an awful card, right? Now lose to 10-9, uh, 10-8, eight, 8-9, eight, which are some of the hands that we were, at least some of the hands that we were beating, so... But that, that's an example for you guys. You know, you can still play. Uh, you can still play pots even if you're uh, hella short from the big blind. It's important to be aware of that. Uh, a lot of people think, "Oh no, I'm 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 close to dead and I can't do anything and my tournament life's over." But it's not. You know, you just gotta chill the fuck out. Just learn how to play ten big blinds deep. I mean, that's the obvious answer. I didn't know, and I asked BBZ, and I was like, "Hey." How do I play six big blinds from the big blinds? And then we dove into it and we did two hours on it. And now I feel like I have, have a really good grasp of what it's like and what we do. All right, so we're super short. So one of the things to keep reminding ourselves is that uh, we don't, you know, when we get shorter, generally in bounty builders, we don't want to shove our very weakest hands. But when you get to a certain point, you also have to realize that if I go all in with 5.8 big blinds, there's going to be multiple people interested. So then all of a sudden it becomes really good to shove with a hand like 6.5 suited or 6.7 suited. Um, because if I go all in with a hand like king seven off for five big blinds, I'm going to get called a lot by king highs or hands that dominate me that are going to be fighting for the pot. So um, at this stage, I'm just looking to get it in with good equity and uh, we'll see what happens. The thing that's also still really important is you can still defend from min raises, even with four and a half big blinds, six big blinds, sometimes even with three big blinds, right? So if somebody would have min raised, I would have just called my 4-3. Again, right, it comes back to the like, how can we possibly make a mistake with five big blinds after the flop? Perfect spot. 4.4 big blinds in the bounty, 4.4 with uh, fours. So how can we possibly lose? I will not believe in any numerical conspiracy out there anymore which i don't already but uh, definitely not after this one if i don't hit a four on this board um really nice big chance we're gonna get isolated uh there's already like there's already eight big blinds dead in um and pairs perform but well multi-way we have nines there ace 10 don't worry i'm doing something with these fours because of my whole thing all right so we finished fourth <laughs> at least that four came back all right so that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I also have a Discord. The link is going to be in the description. I answer a lot of questions there. You can post your strategy questions. There's a whole forum of people helping each other. And you can just talk about all things related to poker. If you do really like these series, make sure you show your appreciation. And you can do that by subbing to the channel and liking the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.